Welcome to Mindset Transformations Radio Show with your host, Coach Myrna. Do you feel the need to do more with your life? Are limiting beliefs holding you back from true success? Enjoy a unique blend of interviews, discussions, and transformation coaching in every show. Get the tools for success. The Mindset Transformation Radio Show with your host, Coach Myrna. Welcome to the Transform Your Mind um, radio show and podcast. I'm your host, Coach Myrna Young, and t- today we are speaking again to Don Paris, PhD. Don um, spoke to us last week regarding um, radionics and um, his device, the SE5. Now, I brought Don back again because we did not get to electromagnetic um, pollution the last time. So we are um, having um, a segment two. And tonight um, we are going to be talking about how is electromagnetic pollution affecting our lives and what we can do about it. So Don, welcome again. Thanks so much, Marnie. It was so exciting last time and we had so much to talk about that I've been thinking about it since then, and I really wanted to continue our conversation, but I'm thinking maybe we should kind of bring people a little bit up to speed where we left off in case they didn't hear the sure. last podcast. Sure, exactly. So um, let me just give them a little bit of your, your um, background before we do that. Yes, and if you can kind of bridge it, that will be perfect. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about Don. Don Paris, Ph.D., is a published author, speaker, video producer, and musician. His book, Regaining Wholeness Through the Subtle Dimensions, has been published internationally in German, Spanish, Japanese, Portuguese, and English. He is known as the the guru of the SE5, the world's most respected subtle energy instrument. He is well-loved for his style of bringing challenging concepts into an easy-to-understand language and has been a popular speaker at the Global Science Congress, the Congress of Spiritual Sciences, and the United States Psychotronics Association. He has created the most detailed explanation of the principles of radionics and the most advanced training courses in the entire field. He began exploring the subtle dimensions in the early 70s and has now trained people in over 30 countries around the world um, in the workings of radionics and subtle dimension realities. Don was awarded an honorary doctor degree in human sciences from the International University of Vital Vitological Sciences in Stockholm, Sweden in 2000 for his work with the SE5 and subtle energies. He and his wife, Alona Selke, who work as a team, have contributed to radio and TV shows and have been quoted in numerous publications around the world. They teach seminars in quantum psychology in the U.S., Europe, and Asia. When not traveling to teach, they divide their time between their homes in the Pacific Northwest and Bali. In his work, Don has dedicated himself to bridging the barrier of the physical boundaries to the subtle dimensional realities. Awesome. Great bio. I hope I learned tonight about the subtle dimensional realities because we didn't get into that. And I would like to know what that is the last time. So, yeah. So in our first episode, Don, you took us through an in-depth understanding of the history of radionics. So tonight I would like to start by um, asking the question, how does the field of radionics affect your specialty? So dimensions, like I said, I want to understand that right off the bat. So maybe you can bridge your audience to, you know, what we talked about the last time. I know you went into a lot of details about how radionics was was um, introduced into the East and to the Western culture and things like that. So maybe tonight you can just tell us what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is, a, yeah, and that's a difficult question to answer. I agree because it is such a broad uh, 
vast field to try to figure out we don't really know what it is we're all poking around a little bit in the dark as humans trying to understand this other dimension because we're we're primarily three-dimensional creatures here running around with our eyes and our nose and mouth and and this other dimension is it's more of a spiritual dimension I that's the best way that I could describe it it's it's non-physical so since it's non-physical, we're attempting to use our physical senses to try to understand something that's non-physical. And I think we're making a lot of headway in that way. Uh, you know, realistically, um, you know, radio waves are non-physical. They're not really here in, in the physical realm. Right. And yet we've, mm-hmm. we've, we've learned how to understand them enough to be able to utilize them, to communicate with each other, to see pictures across the world, um, to detect objects underwater. I mean, it's just amazing what we've been able to do with some of these frequencies that are invisible. And likewise, these subtle energy fields are invisible. They're not something that's directly tangible. Um, Like, for example, with acupuncture. According to acupuncture uh, medicine, we have these, these energy streams. They're like little rivers of energy that run up and down our body. And they've been able to identify them, like the heart meridian or the kidney meridian. And they call them that because they're related to certain aspects of those organs. But these, these lines of energy go up and down the entire body. And so the Chinese figured out many, many, many thousands of years ago that the, if these rivers get blocked, if these rivers of energy, these subtle energies, if they get blocked, they cause, the blockages will cause disease in the physical body. So these non-physical energies, these subtle energies, invisible energies, actually have effect in the physical world. And so they found out different ways. Acupuncture is one of the ways where they put a needle where the blockage is. And that can actually be tested now with a little uh, resistance meter. They put a little bit of electricity in and find out where the blockage is. You can actually test it with a little device now. They put a needle or electrical stimulation in that point, and then the energy frees up and it starts flowing again, just like taking the logs out of a small stream that the beavers started damming up you know you take those out and the river flows and there's water oh, downstream right. to, well, yeah to feed the plant. yeah i heard a story um and i, I don't think it, it, it was in our last episode but it could have been because we talked about a lot of stuff and sometimes i never know i don't remember where where the source is but it's in my brain sure. but i heard a story that someone was able to witness um a heart surgery with um with no uh with no medication or no anesthesia just using acupuncture they, you're not the they, one that told yes. that story right I, I didn't tell you that but i've heard many of those stories they've done brain surgery yeah. they've done heart right. surgery um, right. <laughs> and they and they basically can can stop the electrical currents if if you will these su- mm-hmm. but they're really using the subtle energy currents mm-hmm. we would think of them as electrical um, to stop the pain receptors from feeling mm. that just like, like okay. a drug can also do that. And anesthetic will stop right. the electrical flow or, or block that. Um, but yeah, mm. they've done amazing things. I've had a lot of acupuncture in my life and I've always mm. been amazed by how much better I feel. And, and when the, when the energy is flowing, I can feel it. You know, I think the blockages mm. are more difficult to feel because they come on kind of slowly and, then we just don't feel good anymore and yeah. or we actually feel sick or pain but we don't really can't really isolate it but once that energy blockage is released like with acupuncture for example you can really feel that you know there's a real okay. difference yeah all right so, yeah. so now i'm understanding what subtle energy what subtle energies are you're talking about the energy that makes up the body Right. Or the, the right because we are we are non physical beings having a physical experience. That's the word, right? So the that's, subtle energy well that said. you're talking about. Right. So the subtle energies we're talking about is the subtle energies in our body. Great. Okay. 
that's the first step, right? Just to okay. understand that, you know, like we have meridians, for example, but we also have uh, what we call chakras from the Indian perspective. Right, right. And they're, mm-hmm. they're very interconnected. I mean, they have very similar uh, perspectives, a little bit different way of looking at it. Um, they call these energy lines in the body the nadis, and they're mm-hmm. governed by, this, by the seven major chakras, and then there are also minor mm-hmm. chakras. Yes, you are a meditator, and you're a, you're, you're an, you're a high-level meditator. So, yeah, so yeah, um, uh, clearing, I mean, I do a lot of chakra meditations, and basically what you're doing, yeah, you're trying to open them up and have them flow. But, yeah, so you, you're you right. probably very perfect at doing that because that's what you, that's what you do. <laughs> well, I've practiced a lot of times, but also that's one thing that we yeah. can use radionics for um, okay. because it, it interfaces at that level very easily at the non-physical level. And so mm-hmm. we can actually measure the strength of the chakras find out if there are any blockages, and then we can correct those blockages or free up that energy. Same thing with the meridian. With the radionics, okay. we, don't have, we don't have to use a needle, and we can actually do that at a distance and, uh, and send the corrective information to get the energy to unblock in the meridian or in the chakras, and you okay. get the same effect as doing a chakra meditation or using an acupuncture needle. I had okay. one acupuncturist... Oh, this was 25 years ago. He was an acupuncturist and a uh, homeopath. Mm -hmm. And he found the SE5 and he threw away his needles. He found out that he didn't need to use needles to unblock these meridians anymore. He could test them and and find out where the blockage was. And the person could be 100 miles away and it didn't matter. Uh, That's where it gets really interesting. Yeah, well, you told a story last time. I mean, it's coming back to me now. You told a story of this this gentleman that, that would tap on people's stomach and um, he was able to use the sound um, to diagnose their diseases. So um, something similar like that, what you're talking about, right? Mm. Okay. That was the very beginnings of it. And then it, of course it evolved over, over, you know, decades and decades Mm -hmm. to where uh, of course now it's, it's high level technology um, where we can tune into these subtle energy fields with, with the SE5, and the person can be anywhere on the planet. It doesn't even matter where they are. And then they can, uh, we can find out in real time if there are any blockages and if those blockages need to be corrected. And then we can actually send corrective frequencies back to correct those blockages or unblock those blockages. Wow. All right. Well, maybe this is a good point to talk about here because we didn't get to that either. So your SE5, what is, um, what is it? Well, I mean, it, I, you, you give us a little example yeah. a minute ago. It, it's a device that, that you can trace blockages, right? Is that what, what it does? For example, yeah. Uh, I, we, okay. we really refer to it as an instrument because it's, it's more like a, it's, it's not as much of a device as it is a, a like a musical instrument, you learn how to oh. work together with it. And it's, it's a bit of an art okay. form. Um, okay. um, you've heard of dowsing before, right? Like where they go and find water with the willow rod, for example. Out yes, the, yes, okay. yes. I have heard of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we found a way to amplify that process. And I think uh, you talked about that. Yes, you talked about that last time. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. You're so yeah, so we had a or somebody had a husband that they went and they found water. Right, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so okay. on the SE5, we have a rubbing plate, which is a, a like a very smooth piece of, of special material. It's, it's a type of a plastic, but has a special coating on it. And then we have antennas underneath of that. Mm-hmm. And so as we change the amplitude strength of a particular we call them a tuning frequency. So let's say, for example, we wanted to check your heart chakra, right? So I would put your photograph Mm -hmm. inside the instrument and or hair sample. And then I would look in the computer because this is all, you know, stored in the computer. We have all 17,000 different frequencies we can choose from. But let's just say we chose the heart chakra frequency. Mm -hmm. And then I have an amplitude knob that goes from zero up to 100. So I want to check the 
percentage of how strong I'm picking up the signal from your heart chakra, right? Mm -hmm. So I start dialing down from 100% because that's the ideal state would be 100%. If your heart chakra was open and flowing and the energy's, you know, doing what it's supposed to do, it'll read at 100%. So I start rubbing on the plate and I start dialing from 100% down and I keep rubbing until what happens is we get like a dowsing response. The, the plate will mm-hmm. get sticky and like draw our fingers down, sort of like the willow rod bends down. Mm-hmm. And, and then we can be very accurate to what the percentage reading is on your heart chakra. So if I went from 100 and it went down to like 78%, there's a pretty, pretty good amount of blockage that would... That would not be free. The energy would be kind of bound up. So well, we would is want that, it. Is that, is that a disease or is just that person is not, um, they're not um, uh, doing their energy well? I'm not sure what the word right. is, but their energy yeah, is not well, flowing. Right. Yeah, excellent, excellent question. So <laughs> if the chakra starts shutting down, so I think of them as like energy transformers, sort of like mm-hmm. a, a whirling disc that brings in cosmic energy from the cosmos. And what the purpose of the chakra is, is to convert that cosmic energy into physical energy that can be utilized by the organs. And that's why certain chakras, that each chakra has a relationship to different uh, organs in the body. So Mm -hmm. if that chakra gets really shut down too much, and that could happen from trauma, it could happen from stress, it could happen from shock. Um, you know, these are energy waves and environmental things. And electromagnetic frequencies at the wrong frequency might even shut down part of a chakra or, or some of a chakra. We've definitely seen mm-hmm. that. And if it shuts down too much, it'll starve the organ because it won't get the cosmic energy it needs. Mm-hmm. It'll start starving the organ and then mm-hmm. actually... Dis ease, uncomfort, or dis ease will step into in, the right, organ. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, so, I've heard that too, right? Before. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so yeah. the opposite is also true. So if, let's say, there's an organ that is um, uh, related to the heart chakra and that organ is having a problem from chemical, pro- you know, chemical poisoning or toxins or poisons or pests, um, parasites, whatever then it'll start trying to draw more and more energy through the chakra and that mm. can actually cause the chakra to contract or get smaller because it's trying to pull too much energy through. Energy from it, okay. Mm. Yeah, we're looking yeah. for balance in all this. So, so we can actually determine with the SE5, okay, is it a primarily the, the organ that's trying to draw too much energy through the chakra or is the chakra shut down and therefore, it's not giving enough energy to the organs and, and the, mm. you know, all the different related organs. Wow. So once is, we determine this is, that... This is good stuff. <laughs> oh, it's, it's phenomenal, yeah. Yeah, um, that's good stuff, right. Okay. So once, once we determine that, we can figure out which way to go. Do we need to balance the, the chakra or do we need to balance the organs? And when I say balance the organs, we're balancing the subtle energy field of the organs. We're not balancing the organ. Obviously, we're not opening the body and, and trying right. to. Right. But do I, I have a question. Organ. So this is all preventative. You know, we we meditate, we open our chakras, we get the energy flowing, and we know that if it's flowing, then we have a, a good chance of not um, having disease because stuck energy, you know, causes disease. So what I happens if that. somebody is already, right, but if what happens if somebody is already diseased, um, how can this technology help or it can't? Uh, well, I definitely think it will help um, because okay. when you balance your, your, your chakras, for example, and the, let's say that the, the organs were, were in a diseased state and we figured out it's because the chakra was shut down, and you get the chakra to open back up, then mm-hmm. the organs will naturally heal. It's sort of like feeding food to a starving dog. You know, you give them okay. food, they get healthy. You know, okay. Uh, okay. or vice versa. Exactly. Even if, even if the organ is is uh, is a diseased organ from whatever problem it is, then 
um, it's pulling down on the chakra, and then so we balance more on the organ side of it, the subtle energies of the organ, okay. and the organs then will go into spontaneous healing. I mean, the the CFC okay. five doesn't heal anything. The body yeah, heals the energy. itself. You're right, exactly. The energy and the, yes, all that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We have every we have everything we have everything we need inside of our body to heal everything. To heal. It's just, yeah. but they get blocked. Those energies get blocked, uh-huh. and so you release the blockages, and the body heals itself. That's how wow. I feel. Wow, I'm very impressed by this technology. Now, in our last conversation, you mentioned as well that um, this technology is not readily accessible in the United States. Um, correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 used, but it you know the medical it, it, the medical field is really focused on pharmaceuticals and um, yes. and hmm. and there is some electro medicine, but mostly for testing and things like that. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 seeping in. Let's just let's just say that it is starting to seep in. I see evidence yeah. of it. Um, well, yeah, it's, but, it's it's we're we're coming together because in the you know in two decades ago, or I think you said you started your work in the seventies or something, right? And when uh-huh. you started, nobody was meditating in the West, and nobody was using acupuncture I, in the West, and now it's all merging. So yeah. it's, it's it's yeah, it's it's coming. So this is great. It is. And it, yeah. Almost everybody you talk to now is meditating. It's like yeah, it's the exactly. Thing. <laughs> I was I was teaching meditation classes in 1976 or 75. Yeah, I know. You know? I know you said that. <laughs> no, I probably never heard of the word then. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so that's awesome. All right, so we've got a good start. Let's take a um, our first break, and then okay. we're going to come back and get into our topic, um, okay. uh, electromagnetic pollution. All right. Okay. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Do you feel sick? And medicine can't help you. Are other health practitioners giving you less than what you need? Or do you simply want your health improved? We are here to give you advice on your health and recovery. Our advice is experience-based and applicable for many symptoms that are not recognized in the majority of medicine systems. All you need to do is send us an email on bodyreadings at gmail.com. That is B-O-D-Y-R-E-A-D-I-N-G-S at G-M-A-I-L dot C-O-M. Send us a description of the health issue in one page, and we will give you consultation services. And the best part is that our price is your donation. Disclaimer, all advices given are not medical and cannot diagnose, treat, or heal disease. Having trouble getting a merchant account? Need an international payment gateway? Rejected by another merchant account provider? No problem. iPayTotal wants your business. Our high-risk merchant accounts allow you to accept all major credit and debit cards. Our motto payment gateway allows accepting transactions on the phone. iPayTotal delivers payment solutions and products to help grow your business. Contact us now for your payment processing at info at iPayTotal.com or visit iPayTotal.com www.ipaytotal.com, your online payments provider. Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind radio show and podcast. I'm your host, Coach Myrna Young, and today I am having a very interesting conversation with Dr. Don Paris. And in our first segment, um, Don talked to us about subtle energies and, and how they affect our bodies as far as in disease states when they're closed. Um, we talked about the chakras and um, he talked to us about his um, instrument instead of device, his instrument called SE5 that is actually able to detect um, whether your chakras are open or whether um, your organs are um, being blocked or something. So. Um, that was very fascinating um, technology, and, and I hope that, you know, as we progress and evolve in the United States, that we'll be able to use um, or tap in to this, this technology um, in the mass quantities instead of, you know, seeping in, as Don talked about. Um, but now I want to get into our topic of today, because I've been hearing a lot about it 
John introduced it to me and like anything, you know, in the brain, um, you see a red car or you tell your brain about a red car and you're going to see red cars everywhere. But I've actually, <laughs> I've actually listened to like two podcasts talking about electromagnetic pollution. And I don't want to steal your thunder, but you were talking about Wi Fi. I started to um, put my phone into, you know, airplane mode. So I'm already primed for this stuff. <laughs> so awesome. I know. So maybe what we can do first is talk about what is electromagnetic um, uh, pollution. And then, of course, you can, you know, you know, tell us um, how, um, uh, you know, your expertise and how we can, you know, get rid of them or lower them or, yeah, whatever okay. you do to reduce them. I think that's probably the better word. <laughs> okay. Yeah, at this point in life, um, we're, n we're not going to eliminate them uh, right. <laughs> completely um, <laughs> unless you want to move to West Virginia uh, because uh, there's only one place that I know of that's, completely electromagnetic uh, free and that is in uh, Green Bank, uh, West Virginia and the wow. reason it's electromagnetic free is because they have this huge radio telescope there and they don't want anything like even a cell phone or any type of electromagnetic interference otherwise they can't see what's coming in from the stars. So there are more and more people oh, moving to Green, cool. Bank, West <laughs> Green Bank, West Virginia because They've become oh. electromagnetically sensitive, and they can't even live in the cities anymore. I mean, this is a real phenomenon. So okay. that, wow. You know, in, in, I mean, Green Bank, West Virginia, only has 143 people at, at mm -hmm. last count. Um, it's a very, very small town, but more and more people are moving there because hmm. they've become electromagnetically sensitive. So what, mm. what is that, and what is electromagnetics? Well, okay. Electromagnetics, um, you know, in the, in the technical term, anytime electrons are moving, you know, from point A to point B, they create an electrical field, but they also create a magnetic field perpendicular to the electrical field. So we've got these two forces of nature running side by side uh, in usually in, one, in a direction. It's called a vector from point A to point B. Well, some of these electromagnetic frequencies, uh, the frequency is how fast it changes from in polarity, for example, from a positive to a negative, and in, 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 a, in electrical uh, sense, or magnetically from north to south pole, for example, that can oscillate also. So the faster that these frequencies oscillate, the shorter or smaller amounts uh, distance becomes between the pulses like like we have in our electricity in America we have 50 cycles per sec uh, 60 cycles per second whereas okay. Europe on only has 50 cycles per second which means the wave form goes up and down 60 times in a second which is quite fast I mean I can't I can't go tip, 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 you know I can't get my time right. to go that fast mm -hmm. but it's very it's a very fast pulse, where okay. it's like our brain waves. Our brain waves actually emit uh, electromagnetic signals. So when okay. we're sleeping, they go down into the 3 and 4 hertz range, which means hertz is a, it means cycles per second. So our brain waves are just going that, 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 that. It's really slow. And then if we're in the daydreaming kind of level or watching television, it's kind of the same alpha. We call that the alpha brainwave. I was going to ask you about that because that's the one you're supposed to meditate in, right? <laughs> yeah, there are different ways to meditate, but that's one way is to slow your brain waves okay. down. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. that, yeah, we could go on a whole show about that one, but in meditation, <laughs> and maybe we'll do that sometime. That would be right. fun. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. um, sure. But electromag electromagnetically, then we have – the basic brainwave states, we have delta, which is deep sleep down from, you know, zero to four hertz or so. Uh, and then we have the theta state from four to eight, approximately. And then we have the alpha state from eight to 12. And then we have the beta state, which is waking consciousness like we're in right now, uh, from 12 to up okay. to 22 or something like that, depending on how awake you are. And now okay. they've discovered, and that's 
going back to meditation, there mm-hmm. are meditators that can go into it. Now they've come up with a new term called gamma because they can get mm. their brain waves up to like 44 hertz. And oh, wow. they're in this high, hyper state of consciousness. It's a hyper awareness mm. state. So it's even more awake than we're awake right now. I thought the object was to go lower, not higher. <laughs> well, okay. in the beginning, in the beginning, mm-hmm. it's good to practice going lower so that mm-hmm. basically what we want to do is learn how to control and go wherever we want. That's what really it's all about. Okay. And the, the real high awakened states, they are really more in the higher gamma frequencies. Okay. So it's just different types of meditation and, you know, there's all different uh, approaches. Um, okay. But like uh, transcendental meditation, for example, um, they work on slowering the the brainwave state down into the alpha range or um, Silva mind control also uses the alpha state. Um, mm. It's really some of the real high level meditation. Some of the Buddhist uh, monks from Tibet, for example, they've tested, they've been able to get into these higher hyper states of, of up to 44 okay. hertz. Wow. Okay. So, so an electromagnetic frequency is an actual uh, wave form that we've learned how to harness for mm-hmm. our use. For example, electricity at 60 hertz, we can light up light bulbs and turn on our computer and uh, you know, make a, an amplifier to make the sound for our stereo louder. We can do a lot of things with it. Okay. And, and for, for many, many, many years from the invention of electricity until just about even 30, 40 years ago, we didn't really have too much. We had radio waves. We had television waves, which are still quite low frequencies uh, Mm. comparatively to what we're doing now with all these cell phones and Wi-Fi and all that. Um, But our our cells in our body have been accustomed to what's called the the Schumann resonance frequency, which is the Earth's brainwave. It has its own brainwave. And it Mm. runs approximately what used to be measured at 7.8 hertz, but um, it's been drifting. The, the frequency of the of the earth, some people think it's waking up, that Gaia is waking up because its brainwave has gone up. I was going to use that word. I'm learning so yeah. much from all this stuff. I was going to say Gaia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what you call the earth. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that Mother Earth is waking up, and, and they've measured it as high as like 11 and 12 hertz, which is, you know, getting into beta consciousness, like awakened state, if, it, if we were people, you know, if, if the earth was a person, right. um, maybe she's waking up. But our cells have oriented themselves to those really slow frequencies. Uh, our cells are also electrical uh, transmitters and receivers, and, and they accustom themselves to these low frequencies for millennia. Yeah. Forever. Is it our cells or is it our nervous system? Both. Everything. Our nervous system is also okay. very electrical. But our cells, well, in, in terms right. of okay. reproduction, all these different things, um, the flow of the blood cells and, and mm. the, the assim- assimilation of, of nutrients and the elimination of toxins, all of that is, okay. uh, is related to some electrical impulses right. from our in brain. To make it work, example. right? Yes, got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. And in the last 30 to 40 years, there, there's been this just plethora of, of frequencies that have been invented and started to be put into use uh, between cell phone towers, uh, Wi-Fi. Now they have smart meters. Um, and in conjunction with already floating around electromagnetic fields from computers and light bulbs and uh, microwave. You know, normal electrical lines, microwave ovens, um, yeah. all of these radiations are, they're starting to mix together. And they've actually observed, they have certain type of equipment where they can, you can look on a type of like an oscilloscope, but higher end, and look mm-hmm. at these frequencies. And these, these frequencies are starting to combine and hold on to each other and start they're like rolling around the cities. They're like, it's almost like this. We've created something that we don't really even know what it is anymore. I can just, I can just. 
just picture a movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> with the, you know, the sci-fi yep. movie, but something rolling around. Exactly. <laughs> and eating up people as it rolls. <laughs> it, it is, it wow. is a phenomenon. Okay. Hmm. So, so now, you know, it, it started out kind of simply with cell phones, and they started with 2G, 2 gigahertz, and that's still pretty high, mm. but they keep raising these frequencies because we want faster speeds. We want mm-hmm. Internet on our phone. Uh, we want to mm. watch movies on our phone, and they keep going mm. higher and higher in frequency. Okay. Now, here's the principle. The lower the frequency, the further it will travel, generally speaking. As mm-hmm. you get into higher frequencies, the, the distance that it will travel away from the source gets shorter and 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 shorter. To where now, this new thing they're they're rolling out is called 5G. And I'm sure people, the audience has already heard about it. But in order to make it work, you know, before we had 4G and 3G and 2G, um, well, those came from mostly from cell phone towers. And the towers are pretty far spaced apart. You know, you could put one on a hillside and another one on a hillside and get the signal from A to B. Well, 5G can't do that. It just can't make it very far at all. It's just we're talking 100 meters or 200 uh, yards that it can go. So they so now they to have put to put more towers wow. everywhere, everywhere. So um, that's something you can start to look out for are these little, they kind of like a little cone-shaped thing. They're sticking them on telephone poles and they're, they're, they even want to put them on every house or every third house. Uh, they were talking about doing that in Germany and uh, putting them on every third house, and, and everybody went up in arms about it saying, well, you know, we, can't, we can't do that. We can't have these things right on our house. But that's where it's headed. They want to actually have one in every home. And, um, and, and the thing is, is, you know, there's a slight possibility that it's not dangerous. <laughs> But they, they really haven't been tested. There's no long-term testing on these. And any testing that has been done has been done by the same people that are selling them. So Right, that, of course. That, like, you, you know, know how you just, talk about the, well. you just talked about the drug manufacturers. You know, they're all in it for themselves. But what I heard is that when you have, like, one Wi-Fi, maybe it's not as dangerous, but they're talking about, you, you, you know, you give a nice visual of a ball that's just you know, collecting and just rolling. But mm-hmm. the the person I was listening to saying like, you know, when, for instance, he's talking about when all the Wi-Fi come together. For instance, right. if you open your phone, then you're only not going to see your Wi-Fi. You're going to see the neighbor's Wi-Fi as well. And if you're in a, an apartment complex and you've got oh. hundreds of these things, 20 of that them. is yeah. when, right, that is when the problem comes, when there's just so much is that what you're saying as well? That that as well, exactly, is that all these frequencies, and it's confusing our cells. I mean, I, I did this mm-hmm. test with a woman in Bulgaria, and she had a dark field microscope. And I'll try and send you these pictures, and maybe you can put them in uh, to the, in the, block, to the right? podcast. Okay. Okay. Um, so she took a, a little spot of her blood and put it under the microscope and looked at her, her red blood cells. And they... they you know, she wasn't in the healthiest of states to begin with, so they're a little bit kind of close together and on top of each other uh, to begin with. Uh, and, and if you, you know, healthy cells should have space around each cell. It should have a little space around it so that it can absorb nutrients, excrete mm. toxins, and do its okay. work. Okay. Hers were a little, little bit clumpy, but then I had her make a 10-minute cell phone call, and, I mean, it, I hope these pictures come out. The, they're just completely clumped together, kind of like those balls of frequencies. These cells are trying to protect themselves, and they're all hiding together to try and oh, wow. stop this this invasion. And mm. and it's just it's scary to see what happens after ten minutes on a cell phone. I mean, I I was shocked. I I didn't know it would do that. I just thought maybe you know we should yeah. Do an I, and you know, and for years they've been telling you. At least they've been telling. I've been hearing about it that you shouldn't put the cell phone to your, your head. And I do it all the time. And now they're right. saying that you should use, you should use the, um, you know, your... Um, uh, headset. Your headset, right. Instead right. of putting the... Yeah, they've been 
and they actually were saying that for about 20 years now. But yeah. it's probably, you know, nobody paid attention. At least I didn't. But now right, what you're even... saying is, yeah, especially now that the frequencies are getting higher, the, the, the megahertz are getting higher. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, giga, gigahertz. Okay. Hmm. Gigahertz, even gigahertz. higher than megahertz. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, if, wow. if, you read, if you read in your, in your uh, you know, your little instruction booklet that you got with your phone and you go down in the fine print and you look under the mm-hmm. warnings, they say, mm-hmm. don't put this any closer than like I think three, uh, three quarters of an inch close to wow. your head. It's wow. in the instructions. Wow. Why? Do they, they don't say, well, oh because it's putting out microwaves and microwaves cook me, I you know, and your head is basically me. I just <laughs> started using my headsets. I was always just putting the phone in my ear. My goodness. <laughs> Wow. I've been using phones for 20 years too. Wow. Yes. Wow. But you know, it's but you know that's why we have you know this podcast, and that's why we you know because people learn. It's it all. It's all about building your awareness. So we've talked about yeah. a lot of stuff. We talked about meditation. We've talked about chakras being blocked. Now we're talking about you know electromagnetic radiation. So yeah. um. Now, so I'm going to ask you another thing. So they've also been saying for the longest while that the microwave is bad. But who is going to stop using the microwave? Is the microwave really bad? Is, uh, that's really not a, electromagnetic because that's radiation or something, right? What is, what is no, a microwave? No, microwave is basically just a high frequency. It's, it's just like your cell phone. <laughs> it's, it's just a higher okay. frequency of, of electricity or, or a wave, wavelength. Um, it's okay. not... We call it radiation. It's a little confusing. There's ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. And ionizing radiation is what we get from a nuclear blast or a nuclear power plant. That's okay. very different from uh, from non-ionizing radiation, which is what your microwave and your cell phone do. And okay. Yeah, so obviously you don't want to have your head in a microwave, right? I mean, everybody knows that. Right. Well, we know that, I mean, but can you put your food in it and then eat the food? Is that bad for you? Uh, okay, well, let's go one step backwards first. So we all know not to put our head in a microwave oven, and yet we take a cell phone that's emitting microwaves and we put it right on our head. Our head, right. You know? Got you. Yeah. I missed that. And, Got you. Yeah. All right. mm-hmm. yeah. So, okay, and then what, does it, what happens to the food when you put food in a microwave and you heat it up with higher frequencies or or lower frequencies, like infrared, for example, is, you know, our stove is putting out heat and a lot of infrared frequencies, which are much, much, much lower in frequency. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't used a microwave oven. Uh, I've never had one. Um, well, I don't. So <laughs> 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 I, I, I read those warnings way back when, and, uh, oh you know, I think I... I think I used one to heat some water, but, um, I, you know, I personally don't want to eat food that's been in a microwave oven. I don't think, I think I did taste one. My mom used to use one once in a while, and it didn't taste good. You know, I, I could taste the difference. So it must be doing something to the food, but I, I couldn't, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I wouldn't, I don't like to eat food that's in a microwave, but I warm yeah. my food up every night from a, in a microwave. So. Well, it's kind of the same thing, yeah. So right. I... Yeah, I, I, you know what they're really good for? What I really like microwave ovens for is you can get these pillows and they have like um, uh, cherry seeds in them or sometimes they have millet in them uh, and they're really comfortable little kind of squishy pillows and you can put them in the microwave and heat them up and you put them behind your neck. That's mm. really good. I like, those, I like <laughs> microwaves for that. But in terms of for cooking food, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't so, trust it. But so so okay. So what does it actually do? So let's let's back this up a little bit. So the microwave um, uh, puts these frequencies in your food, and then you eat the food, and then what? Does it block your energy, or what does it do? No, I don't think the energy stays in the food, but I do think it damages the cellular structure of the food and the proteins uh, mm. because it's such a high frequency. And so you're not okay. going to get as much nutrition. Nutrition. Out of it. Got it. Right. Yeah. That's what I All right. Okay. But All right. I'm not an expert in that realm. Okay. Maybe, okay. We, maybe we should take a break. And then when I come back, I want to talk mm-hmm. about some things that people can do to help prevent uh, okay. Okay. some of this yes. uh, exposure. Does that sound okay. good? 
Perfect, perfect. All right, so we'll be right back. Um, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere because now that we've opened this all up to you, you need to know what you can do. So we'll be right back. Do you feel sick and medicine can't help you? Are other health practitioners giving you less than what you need? Or do you simply want your health improved? We are here to give you advice on your health and recovery. Our advice is experience-based and applicable for many symptoms that are not recognized in the majority of medicine systems. All you need to do is send us an email on bodyreadings at gmail.com. That is B-O-D-Y-R-E-A-D-I-N-G-S at G-M-A-I-L dot C-O-M. Send us a description of the health issue in one page and we will give you consultation services. And the best part is that our price is your donation. Disclaimer, all advices given are not medical and cannot diagnose, treat, or heal disease. Having trouble getting a merchant account? Need an international payment gateway? Rejected by another merchant account provider? No problem. I pay total wants your business. Our high-risk merchant accounts allow you to accept all major credit and debit cards. Our motto payment gateway allows accepting transactions on the phone. I pay total delivers payment solutions and products to help grow your business. Contact us now for your payment processing at info at ipaytotal.com or visit ipaytotal.com. www.ipaytotal.com, your online payments provider. Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind radio show and podcast. I'm your host, Coach Myrna Young, and today we are speaking to Don Paris, who is giving us so much good information. Everything um, changes once you're aware. They say a brain that's been um, expanded with knowledge can never go back. So now <laughs> you know that putting <laughs> putting the cell phone to your head is bad. Now you know that you know when you put your food in the microwave that it damages the um, the structure of the protein, so you're not getting much nutrition. So even if you continue to do it, which you probably will, you know the results, right? So, um, but now um, John is going to talk to us about. You know, I mentioned that now um, because I've become aware of all the Wi-Fi and how bad it is. And, you know, I put my phone in, when I remember, in airplane mode at night. So, so what else can we do, Don, to um, reduce our, you know, our, what is the word? Exposure. Or, exposure. Right, exposure, that's the word. Exposure right. to it. Right. Okay. Well, there are a lot of really simple things that people can do that don't cost any money. And then there are some fairly inexpensive things that people can do to invest a little bit of money. And then there's more expensive things, uh, which, you know, like when people become uh, more sensitive to this, they're going to want to probably actually do some, put some investment into uh, making their environment safer or at least their, their own energy field in a more harmonious, balanced way. So let's start with the really simple things that people can do. So you already mentioned one is use your headset on your cell phone, okay? Number one. I mean, mm -hmm. they say that there are still some microwave frequencies that will travel up the wires from the mm -hmm. phone up to the headset, um, but it's still lowering the exposure a lot. So they've come up with now what's called the air phone, which actually uh, has a tube, an air tube, that has a little tiny speaker in the tube. So uh, the speaker is close to the cell phone. You plug it in and it, and it puts the sounds into a little speaker and you hear it through the air and that is really isolating you from the, from the cell phone. But everybody got a, got a, at least got some kind of headset with their phone. So that they already, it's free. It's already with your phone. Use it, number one. Yeah. Or put it in speaker mode. You know, that, right. that's, that's a touch of a button. That's free too. Um, another one that people can do uh, is to turn their Wi-Fi router off at nighttime when they're sleeping. There's no reason to have it on. And uh, the thing is with these frequencies is that they're, even though they're not visible frequencies, light is also a frequency. And so our pineal gland, which is in the center of our forehead, perceives light. And when it gets dark, then it 
it signals the body to start producing melatonin, which basically puts us to sleep and puts us into the dream state. But these Wi-Fi signals are similar enough to light, even though they're invisible, that our pineal gland reacts to it and thinks that the light is still on. So it doesn't produce as much melatonin and then people don't get the restful sleep that they really need. So if you turn off your, your Wi-Fi at night, then um, it's, again, it's just uh, unplugging it or flipping a switch and it's free. Or you could even invest a little bit of money by a timer and so by you know, 11 o'clock mm-hmm. at night or whatever time it you turns do it off, it, right? right? right. Mm-hmm. It turns it off, you stop yeah. working on your computer and you turn off your cell phones and, uh, and of course turn your cell phone off too, not just the Wi-Fi but the cell phone. Don't, you know, please parents, do not let your children have their cell phones in their bedrooms at nighttime. These kids text until, you know, late at night and then put it under their pillow mm-hmm. and they sleep on these things. I mean, awaken, awaken. This is not My good. daughter does that. <laughs> Do not let She's been doing it for Put years. Yes, yes, yes. She's mm-hmm. been doing it for years. i got to talk to her about that. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So another thing that you can do is um, contact your, your electric company, and if you don't have a smart meter on your home, tell them that you don't want one, you never want one, and don't ever install one. Um, if there is one installed, even if it costs, now sometimes the power companies charge you extra money to have the old-fashioned electric meter. Um, it's worth the extra money if there's no other way around it. But these smart meters are 160 times stronger than a cell phone, and they put wow. out the signal constantly. Um, no matter what the electric companies tell you, that they only mm-hmm. check once a day or something like that, it's not true. It's every 30 to 40 seconds. And... Um, mm-hmm. These signals are, are, it's like connecting your cell phone to the wires in your house. Uh, it's just go to stopsmartmeters.org and educate yourself about it. That's, that's uh, oh. another, it's just, you know, it's something that's going on. So, okay. so we've got smart meters, we've got Wi-Fi, we've got cell phones. Um, those are things that you can do already. Um, okay. In terms of small investments, um, you can get a, a radiation uh, blocking pouch for your cell phone. Um, they, they're, it's silver impregnated materials and you put your cell phone in it and it helps stop the frequencies from getting into your body. So if you're carrying it in your pocket or you're, you know, you're, if some of these women are putting it in their bra. Do not put a cell phone in your bra ever, please. I mean, keep these women, I've talked to doctors and they're, these women are coming in with square tumors in their breasts. Where, right where they put their cell phone. I've talked to several doctors that have told me the same thing. Um, just wow. stop doing it. Keep it in your purse. You know, it's not that far away. Um, so these are, you know, they even make material that you can stick on that blocks the, the um, EMF coming in. So you can line your pocket with it, for example, on the inside of your jeans or your pants. And if you're keeping it in your pocket, at pocket least put frame. some lock it, blocking material in there if you don't have a pouch. I heard you can also get a um, the same radiation blocking um, case. Yeah, not a pouch, but you can. Yeah, right. you can get a case. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, they've okay. got all these things now. Just mm-hmm. do some searching, Google it, and find out uh, where you can get some of these things. But yeah, they're on the market and they're available. People are liking them and using them. I have all these different kinds of things because I do use a smartphone. Um, not a lot, but I do use it and. Uh, it's a handy thing. I love, of course, everybody loves their smartphone, but we've got to we've got to be wise mm-hmm. about it. Hmm. So, so then the next level up is to, you know, it's not even about you. It's not about your cell phone. It's not about your Wi-Fi. It's not about your smart meter, but it's in the environment everywhere, right? So we have no control over that. There's mm-hmm. nothing we can do to your neighbor next door uh, to tell him to turn off his Wi-Fi at night or. If you're in an apartment building, they sometimes have, yeah. you know, 20 smart meters, uh, yeah. one right next to each other. So yeah. we've, we've developed a, a small frequency generator that puts out biofrequencies, biofriendly frequencies. Like, for example, when the Russians first went up into space and they spent a little bit of time up in space, they came back, uh, the astronaut was so weak 
they had to carry him from the spacecraft. He couldn't even walk. And they thought it was, you know, lack mm-hmm. of exercise. I don't even think it was just a, one of those first flights. So it was just a couple of days or something up there, well, one of the first longer flights. Mm-hmm. Um, but what they found out was that he didn't have the Earth Schumann resonant frequency, this 8 hertz I was telling you about. Okay. And so the yeah. cells, cells went crazy and didn't know how to orient themselves. And, and so they, the, the whole system almost shut down. So since mm-hmm. then, they installed these little... Uh, they call them Schumann resonant frequency generators on the spacecraft. And so mm-hmm. when they go out in space, they still can tune into this resonant frequency of the Earth, even though they're out in space. Okay. And so that, that is one of the frequencies that's in our chi organizer. That's what we call it. The chi is the, the energy flow. That's the uh, Chinese word for the, like prana or chi, this, this mm-hmm. subtle energy that's running in our meridians. So okay. we call it a, C-H-I is, is how it's spelled. Uh, sometimes they spell it differently, but we spell it C-H-I, chiorganizer.com. That's where our website is. So we organize the chi okay. in the body with a little frequency generator. And, of course, the Schumann resonance frequency is one of those frequencies. And then we, we actually have a little sweep generator that goes through other biofriendly frequencies that are in nature. Like when lightning goes off, it has a burst of different frequencies and we've tried to figure out which ones are are beneficial to us and which ones are uh, harmful and these these cell phone ones like in that test we did with the cells uh, the dark field microscope uh, you know they're they don't look very beneficial to our system so we have these little generators and you know a little plastic one is only a couple hundred dollars I mean it's still a couple hundred dollars but it's it's pretty cheap compared to a cell phone these days yeah, um, And so it puts out these biofriendly frequencies in a cycle. It sweeps through them in a circle about 30,000 times per day. So if you keep this closer to your body, then it helps drown out the other signals or gives the cells mm-hmm. a place to reorient themselves back to the biofrequency. It doesn't block anything. It's not blocking these frequencies, but it gives the cells a, a homing signal and so that they can go about and do their work of, accepting nutrition and excreting the toxins and and do their daily work so we have all different levels of that from a little tiny plastic one to a one that does the whole house uh Mm. to jewelry we've even put it into some bracelets and necklaces that are absolutely gorgeous i've actually heard of that somewhere right okay yes yeah and and there are a lot of different types of pendants you'll you'll hear a lot about scalar pendants and EMF blocking pendants or different materials um, that people wear. And some of them do work um, to a certain degree, but they're, they're passive. They're not, a, they're not actually generating frequencies. They just okay. help balance the, right. the okay. field. Um, so yours, is, we, yours does that, right? Okay. All right. Ours so is Chi organizer. Right. Yeah. Chi organizer.com. Right. Yeah. To get that. Okay. okay. And it has... You know, it's, it's actually a, a little battery-powered frequency generator that actually emits these frequencies out into the field. And, uh, and then we've combined, combined some of them with some radionics. So you can put in a programmed hologram, which we radionically programmed the hologram for different things, like balancing your chakras, for example. Um, <laughs> For, Very important uh, now, I know, understand. Right, yeah. yes. <laughs> so we have like all different things that you can do with these holograms, like eliminating jet lag or improving okay. memory or uh, attracting, even attracting love. You know, these are all frequencies. Wow. And so we've wow. programmed them into the, into the holograms. And so when you put them into the, into the chi organizer, then it starts emitting that out into your auric field. And, and you feel it, you know, people feel it. It's really great. Okay. That's awesome. All right. Well, we're about almost out of time. So um, you want to give us the last one that you can spend a lot of money on, and then you can tell us how we can, I know that you have a newsletter and stuff like that, so you can tell the audience how they can keep in touch with you to learn sure. more of um, the fascinating stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If they go to my website, I have a couple different mm-hmm. websites, but the, the one um, like for the SE5 is SE dash with a minus sign number five.com mm-hmm. so it's easy to remember okay. se-5.com okay. 
sign up right. for my newsletter and they'll mm-hmm. get uh, a bunch of different newsletters. Not, I, I don't overdo it, <laughs> but I do send out occasionally, maybe four times a year, a, a newsletter to bring mm-hmm. people up to speed on what, what's new and what's happening and things they can do for themselves to, to improve their health and their life. Mm-hmm. Um, or chi, chiorganizer.com. Um, yeah, I mean, the expensive ones are some of the jewelry, really. Uh, you know, we okay. have a sterling silver bracelet that's, you know, $800. It's expensive. Um, wow. But it's mostly the jewelry that's expensive, but it does have mm-hmm. a frequency generator built right into the bracelet. Um, that's beautiful, though. Oh, I mean, they are you're wearing yeah. jewelry, and you're you know, protecting your body and your cells at the same time. Listen, exactly. people spend a million dollars in a ring that doesn't do anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Exactly. So I guess from a jewelry perspective, it's not that yeah. expensive. But, no, but, right. uh, mm-hmm. but I, you know, they're, they're a bit pricey. And, and, um, but yeah, and that's on your website go, as well, the chiorganizer.com website? Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of the different models. And, you know, we've got one for the car. We've got one to plug into the computer. We've got one to, you know, for the house. They're all different ways to go about it. Um, but if you have, obviously, if you have the jewelry one and you're wearing it all the time, you don't have to have all the other ones. But then, all the time. Yes. But for the whole house one, if you've got a big family, you can do the whole house at the same time and everybody gets the benefit. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's a great, interesting field and they can get more information there. And um, it's just been a real pleasure. I think we will have to do another show at some time on meditation because that is one of my favorite subjects. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it all fit, And it all I want to learn. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I want to learn. So we'll have to do that. Um, Don is heading back to Bali, and I'm also going to come visit. Um, he and his wife have a really nice resort um, in Bali, and I mm-hmm. plan to come and visit because I'm yeah. definitely into meditation. I'm into, you know, all the, you know, the um, – yeah understanding all the, you know, to make your body work better and to be in better health. So I told Ilona that I'm going to, um, I'm going to come visit you guys. So he, you that's, know, he's heading back awesome. to Bali. <laughs> yep. Next, next week back. we've got about another week and then we go back to yes. Bali and, um, yes. our, our resort is called Shambhala Oceanside Retreat. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's you mostly, spell that? uh, Shambhala is S H A M B A L A. Shambhala Oceanside Retreat and Spa, mm-hmm. and we also have a Shambhala Spa in in another town in Ubud. But um, our resort is up on the north shore of Bali, and uh, we mostly host groups for meditation and yoga and uh, different things like that. But we are open to single guests too. When when there as long as there's space, people single guests can come and stay as well. But it's kind of a yeah. wellness retreat center, yeah. Well, that's what I want. I want to go to a wellness okay. retreat. <laughs> well, that's going to be fun. I am going to come and visit for sure. Well, listen, Don, it's been a pleasure. I absolutely enjoyed our conversation today. I learned a lot more than our first um, round because I know the first round was basically just setting it up and, and giving the sure. foundation mm-hmm. and all that. But today I learned a lot of things that I am doing wrong <laughs> that I need awesome. to change myself in my life. So. Um, I'm sure that our audience um, has been listening with bated breath and, you know, like I said, their mind has been expanded. So thank you so much for taking the time to oh, um, so to, to talk to us about um, uh, this issue because mm-hmm. it is something that's affecting every single one of us. So it's amazing. And, yes, right. I will have you back. Um, you'll have to call me from Bali. But, yes, I'll definitely that's have you okay. back to talk about meditation. <laughs> Because, like I said, it is the new hot topic. Everybody yeah. is meditating. And even my sister said to me, can you show me how to meditate? And basically what I did, yeah. I just send her some meditation from YouTube. Wow. <laughs> That's what I do every day. But um, uh, So, yes, we'll definitely have you back to talk about the benefits of meditation, um, how to meditate, um, and, um, and definitely – um, chakras, because now I understand yeah. that that's, that's extremely important to awesome. um, the energy energy field in your body. So yeah. I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Um, remember to um, uh, to subscribe to the podcast, rate and review, so I can continue bringing you these fabulous guests every week. 
and so that you can expand your consciousness and live your best life now. So, Don, thanks again, and we Thank will talk Thank you so much, Marna. You're very okay, welcome. Awesome. All right. Namaste. Bye-bye. Namaste. <laughs> Bye-bye.